Hi, my name is Colette Rabat and I'm with Orion Realty. I'm a residential real estate broker in the GTA West, an income property specialist and an investor myself. The reason why Araceli and I like to do this show is because we're both investors and we love to give great information to viewers and listeners just like you. Welcome everyone. This is Araceli, Transition Wealth Advisor and Real Estate Investor in the US and Canada. And in my weekly chat with Colette, we have a really good presentation actually that Colette is going to do today. So Colette, can you introduce yourself and tell us what the presentation is about? Of course. Hi, everybody. My name is Colette Rava. I am a residential real estate broker in the GTA West. Uh, I like to help buyers and sellers and people who are looking at investment properties. That's why Araceli and I love to do the show because we like to talk about real estate and making money and how finances work all together. Yeah. <laughs> Always try and say it a little bit different. So yeah, no, this is good. Keep the excitement up. So today uh, I have a little presentation because I do um, a monthly workshop and this is just a little portion uh, to give you a taste of what that's about. Um, just to look at real estate a little bit differently because when people think about investing in property, they might not think of being a landlord or they might not think uh, I can be a silent investor. So that's uh, not what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> But I do have three uh, small tips on how to look at uh, real estate investing differently. So would you like me to begin? Yes, please. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, so welcome to my little presentation. Woohoo! Uh, so three ways to think differently when investing in real estate. I like to talk about it because I find a lot of people, um, the first question I get is, I have this much money, what do I do with it? So I don't like thinking that way. So again, this is about me. Uh, I am a full service uh, real estate broker at the GTA of eight years. I do help landlords all the time put uh, really good leases together and get really good tenants in. Um, I not only help long-term tenants, but also short-term uh, people who have Airbnbs or short-term uh, like an STA or an Airbnb. If you don't know what an STA is, stands for short-term accommodation. Sometimes you'll hear short-term rental. So that's what the little acronym stands for. Uh, my background, as you know, is in um, uh, renovating, interior decorating. I love upcycling furniture. That's my own personal thing. I love gardening. I have pets, I have kids. <laughs> so full life, every action all the time. So, but I do run my business. I love my real estate business. I love my uh, tenants that I have in my own income properties and um, that's life that's the way life works for me so what I like to tell my clients is think differently when you want a residential property we're just talking residential today about income properties so number one tip really treat it like a business even if you're going to be uh, a silent investor you have to think about how the structure of the property is going to be. You want to make sure the paperwork is right and if you're a silent investor to make sure you're going to get your money back, how much you're going to get back, all that stuff. It sounds pretty simple and obvious but you would be surprised at how many people think oh I'm just going to do it this way and you know whatever I'm going to make a couple bucks and that's life. No, no, no. <laughs> Please think about it. The only, the, the, the way that you might not be able to, or you can still think of it as a business, um, if you even rent your basement, let's say for an example, make sure you have all of your accounts separate than your personal account. So whatever money comes in, whatever rent comes in, make sure that's in a separate account because when somebody pays you first and last month's rent, let's say, you have to be able to find that amount. And if let's say they stay for two or three years and the rent increases, you have to go back to the tenant to say, hey, every year to pad this, the last month's rent, sorry, the dog is barking, you can hear that. Um, you have to pad that last month's rent to be accurate with the market rent of that year. So keep that in mind. Um, and that's a really small thing. The other thing too, if you, ha if you, if you hire anyone, handyman to do any repairs, 
you want to write that off. So make sure you have all that paperwork. See, Araceli's nodding. She knows everything touches money. You write down and write off whatever you can because it is a business. Um, revisit the plan every year as well. People forget. They're like, oh, what did I do about that? Go look at your pick. Do a business plan and revisit it every year. Um, so generally speaking, you know, I'm sure we could talk about just this tip alone of how to structure, but even if it's a basement apartment, treat it like a business. Let's see, page two, or how do I get to page two? <laughs> it doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go. Once to stay on tip one, it was such a good tip. Uh, <laughs> so tip number two. Exit strategy, do you think this way when you um, when you look at uh, income properties? I'm asking. Do, do I? Yeah, of course. So this is actually start with the end of mine, always. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's because you want to know how, how do I exit? Like, you know, am I going to retire? Is this going to be something that I'm going to have till the end of time? Am I going to let my kids inherit it? So really thinking about an exit strategy, the one thing that I've seen over the last year, as you know, we've talked about this before, is this mass exodus of people selling their properties because the prices outweigh how much they can earn from the property in the next five or 10 years. So if you can get a million dollar selling, let's just say, the house is worth a million dollars now, it's going to take you more than 10 years to earn that, to have a renter in there. And if you've paid off the property and you're going to have a million dollars in your hand, people sell their property. So you have to keep that in mind before you even start. So think about that. Say, okay, once the property hits, let's say a million dollars in this case, I'm going to sell. I can't earn a million dollars in the next 10, 20 years. Not worth it. It's better for me to sell it now. I'll take my million dollars and reinvest it somewhere else. Yeah, but this is also a uh, collect. I just wanted to interrupt you there. Depending on the plan that you have created, you know, remember the tip number one have a plan. If you decided that you're buying this investment property to supplement maybe your retirement income, it could be right. So, right. how long are you going to be retired? And also, you need to plan about taxes and how you're gonna will this property to people and so on. So think about that. But if you have it as a short term, uh, just to keep it for maybe a couple of years and then turn around and buy another property, then that's your plan. So whatever it right, is, exactly. you know, just well, and, that, and that's uh, that's another example is to leverage one property to okay. buy another. So once let's say it hits a million dollars, instead of selling it, you go back to the bank and refinance to say, hey, I, I would like you to take a look at my property. Tell me how much I can borrow against it. And if they say, well, now it's worth a million bucks, you can uh, borrow, let's say, 80% loan to value. You get this money that you can borrow from the bank, buy another property and increase this whole idea of uh, your, your, you know, your portfolio, your growth of your income that's coming in. And then that way it's they, they all work together for you to actually retire and have this income coming in and you don't really even have to sell anything. So all these things, you need the experts. You need to talk to your experts like your selling to say, what do I do in this case? Uh -huh. Talk to your accountant, talk to me. Um, if you don't know how much it's worth, all these things, use the people that are professionals around you, give you advice and it's really up to you what you want to do. Yeah if you don't have that exit strategy in mind or when to do it. So that's the other thing too. Maybe uh, it's not the time. Maybe the property hasn't grown as much as you want it to. Um, and, and I love this one. Tip number three is one of my, well, it's pretty much my, it is my favorite, um, to think backwards. So it's sort of like an exit strategy, but also when it comes to tenants. So figure out who your avatar will be before you buy the property because let's say you have a million dollars to buy a property what kind of tenant do you want to attract that should be discussed before you even find a property let's say you are very hands-on you want to know who's buying your neighbor's house your neighbor's house is for sale you want to make an offer you have control who's going to move in next door that's one example let's say you love uh, uh, students you really want to have students and to support them 
and maybe you have a child that's going to university, so you buy in that university town. They live for free. You have other students go and move in, and you can have it for years and years, or you sell it when your kid has graduated. Hopefully they'll graduate, <laughs> not to yeah. stay there forever. <laughs> so those are all the things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down even further because I really like to give examples of real time uh, clients that I've had that they have a very specific thing in mind what they want to do, and they have used that um, that that kind of mindset to think, okay, I want to know what kind of tenant I, I I have an idea of what kind of tenant I want before I buy a property. So let's do it this way. So they have a very clear vision. It's manifesting, if you want to call it that. Or if you want to call it like the secret or the, um, you know, you really have your vision in place before you decide. So you yeah. should have for your and own have, personal property too. The one thing that I can say about this is when you have your entire focus in what you want, it is amazing how things start lining up for you to attract that. But if you have a very broad idea, oh, I just want a person, that doesn't yeah. mean that that's gonna be the right person because I tell you, before I started doing that about who I wanted, I didn't know who I was supposed to have in an apartment and you know, I said, okay, whatever application comes in, the one that looks the best, that I think they're gonna pay. But it's not always like that, especially if you have, like I have a triplex, so you got to ensure that all of the tenants get along well because people hear things and some people, they just don't um, don't get along with each other. So it right. is important. Right, absolutely. And and the thing too, like when you have, so I like to call it an avatar or your, your ideal uh, tenant. So when you have that vision in your head, you will exactly what you said you'll be a lot things will move much quicker uh you'll you'll have more focus you'll be much clearer on your path so i really like this idea i really like uh so i'll, I'll go through the examples so you get an idea of what i'm talking about so i had a client she came to me she said i'm looking for a house for myself uh but i do need an extra source of income let's find a house that has a second suite yeah. so we were looking for months you know, really, there was one house that was very close, but it didn't have, it had a basement, obviously, but it did not have a second uh, entrance. It didn't have sort of the setup. So, um, and her budget wasn't huge either. So we found her a house for her and her kids. She separated, uh, moved to a whole different city, uh, and she used the money from her sale of her house to put the down payment on. But she still wanted to have somebody to help her with that, um, you know, the monthly payments. So she, she really had this in mind, I want an older woman, somebody who's quiet, somebody who is respectful of the space, someone who doesn't have crazy parties, somebody who doesn't have crazy smells, that doesn't bake all day and do laundry all day, like all these crazy things that you think it's not, it's, it's not a big deal. Like that's really who she is. She's, she's working all day, she's out, she comes home, she rests, she doesn't entertain a lot. So she wanted somebody very like-minded, and that's exactly who she got, an older woman who, uh, she she was retired, but she had this lump sum from the sale of her house. She wanted to be closer to her, her daughter and her grandkids. So she's really out of the house pretty much all day, every day, helping her daughter. She eats at her daughter's house. She occasionally will cook for herself. But really, very quiet person, lovely woman. They're still together. Can I say it that way? They still live together. Uh, it's been maybe about four or five years. Actually, maybe even longer than that. But they, they seem to be very symbiotic. So that's what I'm talking about. Whether you live in the house yourself, or like Araceli was saying, it's a triplex, or you really want those tenants to get along, or even if you have a short-term accommodation. So that's coming up. My second example is a suburban bungalow. The landlord is very hands-off. He really could care less. He has a property manager that he trusts, and he says, you do whatever, but I listed it, and I was talking to the property manager. I got the story from them. The landlord, all he really cared about was somebody that would respect the house, that they had enough income, and that they had dual income, because if one person loses their job, 
there's also, you know, and the rent in this house particularly is a little bit higher. So really he wanted to make sure that they not only uh, hit the three, uh, sorry, the 30% threshold. Um, what I mean by that is you should get a tenant that uh, makes at least uh, a third, uh, sorry, a third goes to rent. Does that make sense? Am I saying yes. it right? So um, obviously these people make way more than the rent. They can absolutely cover it. Each one of them can cover it on their own. That's how much they're earning. So basically what his idea was, it's a bungalow in the suburbs. So who am I going to get? I'm going to get a family, possibly two parents that both work, possibly one or two kids. It's a, it's a, a three bedroom, two bath house. What he got was a gay couple and they both make very good income but they have an older parent. One of them has an older parent that has to move in. The bungalow works for them. We had to put in a shower bar for the mom to, to be able to get in and out of the tub. But basically, he's so happy to have these this couple in because they're both earning a lot of money and he thinks that they're not going to stick around. Uh, the house will be torn down in between five and seven years. So I have to say to the possible tenants, this is what's going to happen. This is the landlord's exit strategy to go back to the other um, tip. And the tenants also have an exit strategy. I ask the tenants, where, how long do you think you're going to stay? And they say, well, we'll stay until either the mom has passed or the landlord is tearing down the house. So whoever outlives <laughs> the other, that's their exit strategy. And they are very prepared to retire. They're going to move to one of their properties. They are property owners as well. They're landlords. So they could either go back to uh, their properties outside of the country and move there and retire. So it works out, again, serendipitously. So it's such a nice thing when you when that happens, and that's only because the landlord has that in their minds first. Um, so third example is the STA short-term accommodation vacation property. The avatar is themselves and their family. They're the buyers. Um, they wanted a well-known vacation spot, so people will come and you know want a vacation in that spot when they're not using it themselves. Um, they wanted a property that's big enough to host their own family. Uh, and the property that is in the area that they might want to retire to. So this is a very, very specific avatar. So, uh, and also also a big yard and it's possibly a secondary building to do some other you know, storage or something like that. What they got was a property that's two hours away, a well-known vacation destination in Prince Edward County in this case. Uh, quiet town, very quiet, four bedroom, two bath property, large kitchen as you can see, this is the renovation. The problem, the only issue with this is to be a little bit flexible, it was not ready to go. That could be your avatar though. I want a move-in turnkey property. You can absolutely put that on your avatar. You don't have to see all the fixer-uppers then. See how, how that works? Like, you know you're not interested in doing any or putting any money in. That wouldn't work for this property wouldn't work for you in this case it was absolutely the right property because that person is handy and wanted a big project and that's what they got and as you might have guessed this is my <laughs> vacation property I am the hardest client I've ever had <laughs> to please it took me four years and this is the thing too that uh, the one thing that you can't say it's gonna happen overnight these things if you really are clear on what you want and I, I it only took me four years because I wasn't clear on what I wanted so once I got clear I got very specific about what I was looking for it happened pretty much overnight I went to go see this property and I think four other properties in one day I made an offer on this property I believe the next day I got it I changed my mind because I was terrified then I went back and I said, I'm being ridiculous, please accept my offer. And then they took it and I and, and I haven't looked back since. That's been uh, three and a half years now. So I love the property. It's again, I love using the word serendipitously because this is really everything that I could imagine. It's not perfect by any means, but it was perfect for me at the time. 
So that's my third example. So thank you very much for, for listening. I hope you learned something. Um, if you do want to learn more, I do have, uh, uh, you know, our YouTube, obviously our YouTube channel. Um, I have a newsletter if you want to learn anything monthly. It's not invasive. <laughs> I'm not upselling anything. And uh, I always have a, a workshop if you want more information um, that will give you more tips and a lot more information. Um, and it's a free free workshop as well online. So uh, so contact me anytime if you want to have a coffee. I love coffee. <laughs> That's great, Colette. Thank you for putting this together. So just to to recap for everybody. So there's three ways to think differently about real estate investing. The first one is treat it like a business. No matter how small it is, even if you have renting a room in your house. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, number oh, two. Money separate. Yeah. Number two, think exit before entering. So how long do you think you're going to have the, the property? And remember, this is just when you're getting it because things can change you know right. it can yeah. change along the way but it is a reference for you to have that to you know that you're going to have the property for two years three years five years ten years right i don't know etc right and the last one is uh think backwards when it comes down to tenants and have that avatar very clear in your mind especially yeah. if you are living in the house or if you're not living in the house and it is a multifamily, make sure that the people are going to get along because, and I tell you for my own experience, I had a person that was single in the main floor and there was a, a lady that had four children and they were small children. So it was a big to do. I had him on the call, on the phone all the time. The tenants go to bed really late and the baby is crying and I don't have this and I'm getting laid and the baby's crying. Oh dear. So on, until yeah, after I, they, they both move and I said, no, I, I need to have somebody that is older, that they're yeah. not going to be partying, that the kids are running around, especially in the top floor. And right. I got it. And I got an older couple that has, um, their son which is older that he had a disability but he's not running around anywhere uh right. so that was perfect and ever since i've never had any problems so well and that's it like unless you know you have one whole house that you're renting to one family that's different but when you when you have a shared space either yes. with yourself or with other people the two things that you always have to keep in mind are noise and smells and those are things that people do not think about until you're in that situation where you're like, oh my gosh, I can hear everything, I can smell everything. It's really, if you've ever shared a house with anyone, you know, even in an apartment, like apartment buildings, even though they're built concrete and they're strong and very soundproof, you still hear stuff. So there's always air gaps, there's always ventilation, there's always things you have to consider. So when you really think of, and you hit it right on the head, if you have uh, tenants that are very similar in in their either their lifestyle or yeah. if, you, you know I've heard people too there's somebody that moves in and they're a shift worker and they come home at two o'clock in the morning exactly. or even 6 a.m. and they start banging around and pots and pans and things like that like that really is disruptive to other people and their lifestyle so uh, you all, you have to ask those questions when you when you really uh, look at tenants and interview and sometimes they'll lie. I can't say tenants don't lie. They do. And sometimes their lifestyle changes too. Mm -hmm. So be as accurate as you can, be as specific as you can. Yes. So, and you know what? Things happen too, right? Like things change. So yeah. and I, I think I would, I would do one more, which is uh, just to be flexible because even yeah. though you have a plan of action, if something changes with you, or changes with the tenants or changes with the economy. I don't know. There's many, many things that could change along the way of and that you don't foresee. And uh, you, so. might, you might have to change your avatar too, because if you say something that maybe is a little unrealistic, like I only want, uh, you know, the king of Siam to move in and you know, there's no way that he'll ever move in. You might have to adjust a little adjust bit. Adjust it, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, be a little flexible. That's a very good, 
very good uh, point too. Yeah, so this is all we have for you today. And uh, this is, is great, great conversation because I think when people are just trying to get into real estate, sometimes they don't see how many things uh, they need to think about. And I think this will kind of get you started at least thinking about it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? We're all phone call away. So yeah, we absolutely. Talk to us. So we will see you next week. And uh, remember, keep uh, the comments and also the questions so we can answer them for you here. Okay, Thanks we'll for see joining you. us. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like more information or if you have any questions, please go to my website at www.coletrabba.com. Dot com.